Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Airsoft. Now, the comments, Airsofter, who apparently reviews overpriced sniper rifles, so you can decide whether you want to actually blow away your money like you're in Vegas. Or New Vegas, depending on which kind of person, which kind of Vegas you like. And oh boy, kiddos, do we have one today. And you know, I, it took me a minute to realize, you know what, how can I uh, tackle this? You know, how can I go at this? Should I talk about the significance of the gun and the fact that it was used by Cortez Cartanal from the Amazing Machinima series, which has two seasons, by the way, they're working on a third season, Elite World, or the fact that it is a British-designed rifle, it is an infield rifle? Should I even talk about the fact that it was in, I don't know, every single goddamn Call of Duty and... And even Counter Strike should I even talk about the fact that it's in Rainbow Six, Vegas and Vegas Two, mind you. I think the other Vegas and I think the other Rainbow Six games should I even talk about the fact that the rifle in itself is a wonderful, intriguing gun and the history of its design that I learned about thanks to watching Forgotten Weapons video on it. Should I even talk about the history of it? No, no. Instead, when doing research on the actual this one itself, I found out it's made by the guys at BB Tac. BB TAC, which, by the way, is a subsidiary of Well and UK Arms. Because, of course, if you want to skirt by some bullshit, you make a subsidiary company that is still under your brand, but you try to push it off as some other goddamn new company and decide to overcharge on a fucking gun well above $110 anywhere. I'm not joking here, mind you, on Amazon. Charging damn near a hundred and twenty to a hundred and thirty dollars. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? No, no, does not compute, does not compute. It does not compute. I can't stop. This is stupid. This is stupid. 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 What is Stalin? What is Mao? What is all this stuff? What is Venezuela? Just so you folks know, here's some context for you if you if you want to know what you can get for that kind of price tag. <laughs> for $120, you can get a G and G combat machine. For $120, you can get a JG M16. For $120, you can get a JG G3, which is a battle rifle. And apparently in Airsoft, battle rifles are considered fucking DMRs. For $120 to $130, you can get an M14. A battle rifle. And, apparently, a DMR. For $120 to $130, you can get something a hell of a lot better and worth the money. Now, before we continue, fair warning. This is a pre-owned gun. This was owned by my buddy Aaron, who actually upgraded it. Apparently he did minor upgrades, didn't change out the barrel, and instead decided to put in some minor upgrades for the nozzle to be more precise so more airflow is going into the bb itself actually locking the hop up in place so it's got that precise hop up and i don't have the weight correct weight bbs to actually adjust the hop up weight because the fucker's locked in place but don't worry we're going to talk about how i can i'm going to fix this damn thing later on <gasps> but understand this is a pre-owned gun and i'm still fucking pissed the fact that this thing is overblown, overpriced, much like a certain some Austrian slash Hungarian and fucking airsoft who has his own goddamn brand, own fucking rifle that he's building, own fucking Tokyo Marie clone he's building. And believe me, that shit pisses me off to the bone. But enough of my gabbing, enough of me being angry. 
Let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the BBTAC L96, or the, well, WMB01 fucking dash goddamn fuck you, pay us your fucking money, overpriced bullshit. What is on this gun, exactly? What do you get with this gun? Like I said, this is a pre-owned gun, and... Yeah. Originally, when it came with a full-length barrel, it would come with a sling attachment, or not sling attachment, but a bipod attachment that would actually lock into here. And you can actually buy aftermarket parts, a tri-opter uh, rail system that actually does slide into here, and you would get that by pressing a button here. Oh, pressing this button right here, my bad. There's a another bipod attachment right here. You have one, two, three, four sling mounts right here and here for either left or right-handed shooters. There is a big, lovely bolt on here, which actually you can somewhat do a mad minute with. And yes, I have been able to do that. The safety is right here on the right-hand side, so it's actually pretty easy to get with your trigger finger. And the bolt knob itself is actually made out of metal. The bolt itself is made of metal. Everything else that looks like metal is metal. The cheek that's right here, you can actually undo these two screws right here, and you can actually raise or lower it. You can adjust the butt pad here by undoing this and just popping in some uh, some more rubber uh, sector to actually pull it out. And the whole OD green I do approve because I'm an OD green kind of guy and the fact that I fight in the woods is a lovely, lovely thing. I wonder if this will come out. Yes, it does. Okay. And of course I have this on here because, you know, one of those things. Also, the rail itself is a little wobbly, but then again, this is a pre-owned gun, so, you know, it's just, we're going to deal with some things. But, like I said, with a mad minute, you can actually somewhat do. So you can actually grab it with your trigger finger and your thumb. Your middle finger can actually touch this, which it does have a functioning trigger safety, which you would see on a lot of other guns, you know? So you can't actually fire it unless, you know, you do that, which even then, because it's a pre-owned gun, the trigger safety doesn't really work all that much. And if you just pull it to the back here, you can't actually do that. Either way, though, back to the Mad Minute section. Like I said, just grab it with this and this, have your middle finger ready to go. Grab up here and... Much like that. Now you could actually do another trick, which of course is using the ball of your hand to actually actuate the bolt. Which once again, grabbing up here. Damn it. Damn it. On instinct, I want to actually grab the bolt, so I'm not really used to that yet, but you get what I'm saying. This is designed in a way to actually do a mad minute of sorts, should you actually, you know, be good at it, and, you know, I mean, I'm going to practice that some bitch pretty good, because I do like the large ball uh, bolt. I do like that style. I do like that it's actually pretty close to the trigger. Uh, it's just one of those things I actually do like. And what I do like about this is that it actually, this right here, this is where the hammer would be, when you actually actuate the gun, pull this back around here, this right here does pull back a bit. Just just watch this little seam right here. Just watch this little seam right here. It does go forward a bit, indicating that a hammer would be uh, cocked, essentially. So, it's actually pretty nice. Also, this is a pretty heavy son of a bitch. Even without the Barska scope, without the scope riser, or the riser rail right here, and without the run cam on here, which... Yes, we are going to do. Which, by the way, the magazines this thing does use are these. A rather interesting design magazine that I do like. And, uh, yeah, I do like that, uh, it does indicate where it's supposed to go in case you're an idiot and you go to, uh, quickly load it and you load it backwards and it's like, oh, wait, that arrow's there to show that it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be point that the BB loading section is supposed to be pointed that away. I do like that. Stupid proof. Now, like I said, this is a pre-owned gun, and the magazines do are kind of a pain in the ass to actually load in, load out. Uh, like I said, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna fix this gun a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna fix her up, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna fix her up with. So uh, we'll get to that. Now, before anyone says anything, no, I'm not going to be a goddamn sniper. I'm not one of those guys. I was raised on pure iron sights alone when it came to bolt action rifles. I was raised on. Uh, standard 30-06 rifles with irons. I was raised on Mosin I was raised on uh, 
a Remington uh, 230. Yeah, 230s, Remington 230. No, not 230s, good lord. 280s. That's what it is, 280s. Remington 280s. I was raising a lot of bolt action rifles with irons, which is why I think I have a stigma in my right eye because everything out of my right eye is blurry, which is why I need an optic on most, if not all my guns, because, well, I can't see uh, past 10 feet. Once again, stigma, right eye. Need optics. Need, need magnified optics because, of course, you go and fire iron side guns for 26 years, of your, well, yeah, no, 26 years of my life, and uh, you kind of need, you probably need a glasses. I'll probably be needing glasses by the end of when I turn 30 at least, probably, who knows. Either way though, the buttstock itself has this nice padded pattern. I do like this pattern on the buttstock. That's actually really nice. It actually is somewhat very comfortable. I do like that. The cheek rest itself is not bad and uh, gives you nice optical uh, alignment with the optics. The eye relief is not bad either. Once again, it has to be this close because my right eye being bad. Either way though. So with that said, I honestly have nothing else to say about this gun. That's the only real positive about it is that the bloodstock's comfortable. It's the bolt is good there, and uh, oh yeah, one last thing. Just so you know, this came from the people over in China. The fucker has one big thing bold made in China. Fuck. Fuck. Anyway, oh, and uh, this little bit right here. Yeah, that's your hop up. There's your hop up adjuster. And like I said, I cannot adjust it because, uh, well, technically can't be adjusted because it is molded into place. My friend decided to actually uh, kind of lock it down in place so it's in that nice little sweet spot for him. So, with that said, let's just get rid of the chronograph, let's get to the range, and we'll actually see how this thing actually does perform. Uh... Alright, we got this loaded point twos. So we are going to see how this does. Which, by the way, I'm only going to fire a few shots out of this because, uh, again, it's um, the magwell's kind of tight, and even then it's getting it's a little tight to get in there. So there it goes. Okay. Here we go. And let's go ahead and fire a shot out of this, see what we're getting. 342. Okay, magazine did not... Come out. Three forty two. Third shots the charm. Twenty two FPS. Okay, hold on. Finally, okay, we got an issue here. There it goes. Three forty-five. Hmm. That's um. Hmm. That's honestly interesting. It, it was firing sub. 350. Now, it might be because of the barrel length being cut down. Uh, that might be a factor in it. I don't know. But, uh, let's take this outside and actually see what we're getting in terms of range, because now I'm a little curious. What is this thing getting range-wise with the fixed hop-up in place? And again, I can't exactly adjust the hop-up, because once again, the thing is actually, uh, fixed in place. Let's go find out, shall we? All right, we're out here on the highest possible level with a fixed hop-up sniper rifle, low point two. So we're gonna find out how she is shooting. Also, fair warning: I'm not the steadiest of hands when it comes to heavy guns, or at least uh, heavy guns like this. So in the future, I definitely am gonna get a bipod for it uh, when I get it fixed up, which we'll talk about when we get back inside. So safety off. Pointing it directly out there. Let's see uh, where she's shooting, shall we? Yikes. She is shooting. Oh boy. You're seeing that too, right?
Yikes. Also, do know the only other heavy BBs I have are .25s, and I don't want to use those until I'm in a game or something, because I don't want to waste my .25s. .2s, I can do that for days. I can do .2 for days. But, um... Yikes. Uh... Let's get back inside and, uh... Yeah. If I had the heavy weight BBs need for this thing, like point threes, point three eights, maybe, maybe uh, you know, point four, maybe point forties, uh, maybe I would see the effective range of it. But since we don't exactly have those, donate to the PayPal down below if you want to help out with the correct weight BBs. Um, if I could have adjusted the hop up, we probably would have seen better uh, ranges. We probably will see better ranges with this thing when we actually, once I actually fix her up. And when I mean when I fix her up, I mean. It... I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It was bad, yes, because of the fixed hop up that's on this thing, and the fact the hop up is fixed and it's set for a specific weight BB. I don't like that about certain pre owned guns. People will think, oh, I'm just gonna lock it there, and then when I sell it, I just tell them what the weight BBs are. Not, well, I'm not even thinking they should actually get those particular weight BBs. Um. I hate to say it, it's it's a seven out of ten. It's an okay gun. It's it's not bad. It's not great. It's just okay. Now understand this is a pre-owned gun. So that's so take that as okay. This is what it is pre-owned. What could it be if it was fully stock? And I could adjust the hop up, and I could actually you know have the full length barrel without the thing chopped off. In my opinion, I think it would have been a better gun. I think it is a good gun. I think the L96 platform is a great gun and has such nostalgic memories for a lot of people. Uh, be it from Counter-Strike or Call of Duty or even Rainbow Six, Vegas, and Vegas 2. No, I'm not talking about Siege. I will never talk about Siege because I haven't played Siege yet. Yes, I know. Frickin' travesty that I haven't played Siege. But here's the thing, folks. If I'm going to get an L96, or at least if I'm going to fix this one, I'm here are the parts I'm going to do to fix it. I'm going to get the fluted barrel. I'm going to get the metal spacers, not the foam spacers, the actual metal ones from Angel Customs. I might actually go full Angel's Custom or Action Army on this son of a bitch and fully upgrade internally in order to make it just that much better of a sniper rifle or at least make it a loner sniper so that way I know that if I'm loading this out to someone who wants to try sniper rifles out for once, they're going to do that. But here's the thing. That's just me personally. Because I probably will never run with a scoped gun. And even if I do, I'm probably going to put a red dot on there because... Call of Duty. Modern Warfare. Shipment. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but here's the thing, folks. If I want to get an L96, I'd go with the SEMA L96, which has a magazine. Not the whole thing of, oh, the magazine goes up in here... I'd rather have one that actually has the magazine that goes in here where the magwell is on the actual L96. I'm someone who believes in actual accuracy when it comes to guns, and... Ah, oh, God, I hate this stupid thing. I really do. Yeah, I'm going to have a day and a half trying to pull this magazine out, which is another thing. I'm probably going to attach tape or something to this so I can actually yank the fucker out. But like I said, for the price tag, you can actually get a good AEG. And for those of you who are wanting to go with a sniper rifle, then go with a SEMA VSR-10 or JG VSR-10 or something of that nature. Because VSR-10s are actually good. They're traditional rifles. So if you've hunted with a traditional stocked rifle, then that's one you want to go with. And believe me, I'm going to go that route for a hunting rifle project, which is another video as a whole. And believe me, we're going to talk about that. I'm, I'm not going to lie, folks. We are going to talk about that. But, as a whole, I don't think this is worth it. Personally, I don't think this is worth it. Because, again, it's not fully accurate to the L96. I'd rather you have the ability to have a magazine. I'd rather have that nice feeling of a good rifle. And believe me, this actually does have a good body. It's just... It's fucking well. I just... I cannot justify it. I can't tell you guys... Yeah, no, go with this gun. I cannot justify that for you. 
I really can't. And I can't justify the f saying, oh, drop the hundred plus dollars. Now, if you had that money and you won L96, go with the SEMA. The SEMA L96, which once again, magazine fed, is between 90 and a hundred and something dollars. It's within that price range and actually can be upgraded with the same parts that you can put in this, except once again, magazine fed. That's just the thing. That's just a personal thing though, you know? But if you have one of these, let me know in the comments section down below how yours has fared and if you've had any problems with the magazine well and the magazine being just hell to get in and out, essentially, being stuck up in there. Like, seriously, there's the magazine. It's just not, it's not coming out. Thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al. The comments are Softer who reviews sniper rifles, so you can decide if you want to as well, or at least if you want to run a sniper rifle. <sighs> anyway, thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al, and would you kindly consider liking, subscribing, disliking, hitting the notification bell, and leaving a comment on what you think of the BBTAC slash Well L96 sniper rifle, and if you think there are better models out there. If there are, leave it in the comment section down below so other people who are watching this video can actually find that for a better price tag. Because, once again, I can't justify telling you guys to drop a hundred plus dollars on a sniper rifle when... Jesus Christ, there's an actual Crossman one! I can't believe I'm saying this! There's an actual Crossman one, which is basically a overblown BSR-10 that looks like it's got a big old soak on barrel on it for the same goddamn price tag of... well, not even the same price tag, for $89.99. Ugh. Can't believe I said that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Ersoth Al, and see you guys in the next video. Till next time.